Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another unbiased, in-depth gear review. And in this video, I'm reviewing a, a kayak that helped break down one of the barriers to kayaking. And there aren't that many barriers to getting into kayaking. There's, well, the fear of water being one, but the bigger one is the, the kayaks themselves. A full-size kayak, 10 to 17 feet long, can be a pain to move around. Uh, you add on top of that the weight of some kayaks, and that's a, it could be a real issue. And it can literally stop people from getting into kayaking. Fortunately, there are kayaks on the market that are lighter, and that's what we're gonna look at today. This is the Hurricane Tampico 130. The Hurricane Tampico 130 has a retail price of 1,600 US dollars. It's 13 feet, two inches long. It's 26 inches wide. It weighs 45 pounds or 20 kilos, and it has a max capacity of 300 pounds or 136 kilos. Its primary use is for touring. The Tampico features a multi-chine hull to blend speed, tracking, and stability. A new H-Pod storage hatch, bungees on the back and front, their new Airstream strong side padded seat, an adjustable back support, bulkheads in the front and back, and hatches on the front and back. Now, I'm six foot two, 200 pounds, and I've been active my whole life. I've been paddling my whole life, but I still really, really appreciate a 45 pound kayak. It's nice to move around a 13 foot boat that's this light, but I'm not even willing to move around a five pound kayak if it's no fun to paddle and so that's what we have to figure out is this thing worth it and to do that well i actually already tested this kayak i went down to the okifinoki national wildlife refuge and did a three day kayak camping trip in this sucker here it was an incredible opportunity to really test this kayak out and so here's a few shots of me putting this thing to the test and then i'm going to tell you all about this kayak Yes, that was one of the coolest places I've paddled in the world. I'll be honest, the Okefenokee Swamp wasn't on my bucket list before I headed there, but it really should have been. It is a spectacular place and definitely something you should put on your bucket list. But it really was a great opportunity to test this kayak on a multi-day trips. I love multi-day trips. And this, well, I'll talk about that in a bit. Let's start, like I always do, by talking about the boat's portability. It's 45 pounds. I mean, that's not feather light, but for a 13 uh, foot kayak, you know, let's even back up a bit further and explain. There's really three ways kayaks are made. You've got rotomolded molded kayaks, which is basically plastic is dumped into a mold. It's heated up in an oven, rotated around so the plastic uh, coats the sides. And then when that's done, oh my gosh, there are a lot of bugs here. When it's done cooking, the mold pops open and et voila, you've got a kayak. Rotomolded molded kayaks, they tend to be very durable. They're very cost effective to produce, so they're cheaper, um, but they're also heavier. And so a rotomolded molded kayak of this size is probably gonna be 25%, 30% heavier than this kayak. This is made by thermoforming. And what they do with thermoforming is there's two sides of the kayak that are made separately and then they're put together and welded together. And so you have the bottom half, top half welded together. This uh, allows them to create a stiffer and lighter kayak. It's not quite as durable and it's not quite as cheap as rotomolding. And the other main technique they have of make, making kayaks is um, with composites like uh, Kevlar and carbon fiberglass and, and those make beautiful stiff 
uh, kayaks that are very light and perform great. They're very fast through the water, but you pay a premium for them. They're the most expensive types of kayaks. This is a thermal formed kayak. And so you, uh, you trade off a little durability, even though it's quite durable, you have to be more careful that, with this than you would be with a roto molded kayak. Portability, easy to move around. Because of, the, uh, of its, how it was built, you do have to be a little bit more careful when you're tying it down on your vehicle. This isn't the kind of kayak you just reef as hard as you can down on the cam straps to button it down. I mean, you can tie it down pretty tight, hard. You don't have to baby this thing, but you uh, have to be a little bit more aware when you're tying it down. Now, let's talk about its comfort. Was it a comfortable kayak? Well, yes. I did a three day trip. We were on the water on average seven to eight hours a day. And so it really did test the comfort of this thing and it passed. It definitely passed the, the, the comfort test. That's great for me being a bigger guy, 34 inch uh, inseam, uh, size 10 feet, 200 pounds. You know, I can be tight in some kayaks. That kind of time spent in a kayak can be uncomfortable. But this one, I really wasn't uncomfortable. Um, I mean, I was no more uncomfortable than you'd expect to be from sitting down for seven or eight hours at a time. The seat is nice and padded. It's got a thicker part on the front of the seat, which helps a little bit lift your legs up. The back support is adjustable. Uh, I can go up and down. I just keep it in the down position because um, that's what I'm used to. I'm used to having a low back support and, and uh, I like it that way. But for people who like a high back support, this, this would be really nice as well. It's a padded um, back support. It's a comfortable kayak, absolutely. Let's talk stability. This is a 26 inch wide kayak and right out of the gates, you know that it's not going to be the most stable kayak because it's only 26 inches wide. It's not the narrowest kayak, but it's kind of a, what I like to call a recreational touring kayak or a light touring, even though actually it's more than a recreational touring kayak. This is more of a light touring kayak where you're trading some stability for efficiency of travel through the water. And that's exactly what it does. It's not the most stable kayak, but it is a stable kayak. Like you, you could put anybody in this thing and they'd feel pretty darn good. Now the hull has got a V hull to it. And so what that means, it's really designed for travel uh, forward, but it also means when you put it on edge, it kind of locks into place. So it's got good primary stability, but it's got really nice secondary stability. When you put it on edge, to, whether it's trying to turn the boat sweeping, or if you're paddling in rougher conditions, very nice uh, secondary stability on this thing. So the performance of this thing really comes from the hull. And the hull of this kayak, it's a V hull. It's got uh, uh, this V shape, a keel right down the middle of the kayak, and that helps it track, keep on, on a straight course through the water. And it does that, it does that great. It helps it travel efficiently forward and it travels very efficiently, very well forward for a 13 foot kayak. It's not a long kayak. It's not the fastest kayak because it is only 13 feet, but for a 13 foot kayak, it travels very, very well through the water. I, it's a fun boat to paddle. I think that's the best way to put it. This is a fun boat to paddle because every stroke you take, you're you feel like, boom, I'm actually moving <laughs> with this stroke. It's, I'm not fighting the water, I'm actually cruising through the water. It, it travels well in the water, but it's also at 13 feet, it turns very well, especially because of the secondary stability. When you put it on edge and then you start sweeping to turn the boat, it likes to turn, it turns very well, better than when it's held flat, then it likes to go straight. But at 13 feet, you don't have to put this boat on edge for it to turn very well. You know, it really does provide a great combination of uh, stability, uh, maneuverability, and forward speed. So good performance, good stability. Let's talk about some of its features. And it doesn't have that many features really to talk about. Probably the ones to, to talk about are the hatches. Two hatches, a ha well actually three hatches, but two main hatches, a one up front and one in behind. And it has two bulkheads, uh, which are walls that separate the compartments of this, of this boat. There's one right behind the seat and there's another one right in front of your feet. That's great. Great for a variety of reasons. Great for multi-day trips because you have basically, they're not waterproof compartments, but they're separated compartments, watertight compartments in the back and in the front. And then you have your cockpit. So if you ever did swim, the cockpit is going to swamp 
not the whole kayak. Much easier to deal with a kayak that's only got this much area that's swamped, not the whole thing. Now for multi-day trips, that also protects the gear you have from just being completely soaked. You still want to put everything you put into this kayak in dry bags. That's, uh, you just always want to, anytime you have gear of any nature in a kayak, just dry bag it. Even if it looks like a hatch is super dry, it's not. It never is. So anyway, that's a great feature, a, a safety feature because of the bulkheads, but also for multi-day trips, great feature. The hatch back here is, in the stern in particular, is nice and big. And there's lots of room back here, tons of room for gear, a very good multi-day trip boat. Also a big factor is there's no skeg or rudder on this boat. And when you have a uh, kayak has a skeg, that skeg comes up into the stern of the kayak and it into a skeg box. It basically takes up space in the back of the kayak. This doesn't have that. Tons of room for gear. The new feature they have here is this, this day hatch right in front for, hey, look at that for my trip. A couple of granola bars, some nuts. I mean, that's what it's for right there. This is waterproof. It's got a gasket on it. So it should be quite waterproof. Now I love having a little easy access hatch right there and you can see I was using it. But uh, you know, the one downside for this thing was I actually threw my phone in this thing because it looks like a great phone side. It pretty much was the exact same size as this when, with the case on it and I couldn't get it out. <laughs> it was a perfect size. And so, I, you know, that's a little one of those, ah, I wish it was just a little bit bigger. There's plenty of room there for it to be bigger. If it was a little bit bigger, of a big phone could fit in there and not be an effort to get out. But you know what, that's being picky. But that is what I'm here to do is, is test these things and find out, find uh, the big things that could be improved, small things that could be improved, you know, like that. And, uh, and really more than anything, identify who is this kayak for? Not so much, is this a good kayak or a bad kayak? That's always a question. I'm, I can tell you right now, this is a great kayak. Is it the right kayak for you? Well, that's a different question altogether. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Who is this kayak for? Well, this, you know, being a light touring, a day, it's not even a day touring kayak. It's a, it's a touring kayak. <laughs> this is a touring kayak. And the reason it's a touring kayak uh, I, I classify it as a touring kayak is because it has a cockpit, a small cockpit here that's designed to take a skirt. And right away, that combined with the fact that it has two bulkheads um, means that this thing can be, is safe <laughs> to take into rough conditions. Doesn't mean you should, but it's more your limitations as a paddler rather than the boat's limitations that will allow it to deal with rough conditions. So this is a boat that can really handle any type of conditions. It's not designed for rough water paddling. Um, like some performance touring kayaks are, this is designed for more for calm touring, but if rougher conditions arise, it can definitely handle them. Being 13 feet long, this isn't designed for massive expeditions where you're covering huge, uh, huge amounts of ground, but it still moves fast. So it's for someone who wants a fun boat to paddle and is willing to give up some of that bomb proof stability that some kayaks offer to have a boat that is fun to paddle and can travel faster. It's for anyone from a beginner to an expert paddler. This is a boat that anyone can really enjoy. So um, the value, well, this boat is retails for 1600 US dollars. Uh, and for touring kayak, you know what? That's pretty much bang on what I would expect to pay for this thing. There are cheaper kayaks on the market. Absolutely. I mean, you can buy kayak on Amazon and inflatable kayak for hundred dollars. You can buy a high-end carbon Kevlar kayak for $6,000 or even more. $1,600 is a lot of money, but it's not a ton for a kayak. It puts it um, in the same ballpark as a lot of other similar kayaks. You pay a little bit more for the weight of this thing because it's thermoformed. But to be quite honest, for me and for a lot of people, if you have the money, that weight savings, it's, it's worth a fair bit. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. If you're gonna use your kayak a lot and you're gonna be carrying around 
a 45 pound versus a uh, kayak versus a 55 pound or a 60 pound kayak. There's a big difference there. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Paddle TV. But more importantly, if you have any experience with the Tampico 130, leave a comment down below and let people know uh, what your thoughts are on it and what your experiences have been on it. But also, they have a couple of other models of, or they had, I'm not sure if they still, Hurricane still does, uh, another couple of models of, of the Tampico. I'd love to know the difference between, I haven't tried the other ones, and so I'd love to know the difference between this new one and the old ones. But this one here definitely gets two thumbs up from me. This is another keeper boat for me. Man, I'm gonna have to find some more storage space. You know what, it's worth it to keep fun kayaks around. I'm just going to keep finding space to put them. Stick around, we got lots more paddling tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way.